In uh, this video, I'm going to introduce you to a tool called MTR. MTR combines both a ping uh, tool and uh, also trace route into one tool for monitoring uh, network path metrics. Network path metrics is really network layer uh, metrics, so it involves things like uh, latency and packet loss. So just to do a quick review, uh, network latency is uh, basically comprised of five different uh, components. There's propagation delay, queuing delay, device processing delay, transmission delay, and protocol delay. So it's really accumulation, all those different uh, effects from client to server. And then you multiply it by two to get your round trip delay. So the drawing here I've got is just a topology with a client connecting. It's got a last mile to this R1, the default gateway. It could be the ISP uh, local loop. Then you go to service provider, back to a uh, internet router and onto a switch. So what I'm going to do is um, do an MTR from client to web server and take a look at what's happening there. So we'll just do MTR 172.16.2.1. This is a Linux program, but there's also a Windows version as well. So you can get it free with, uh, with uh, Linux. So I've got five hops here. So that's the first thing you notice, five hops. The first one is to R1, that's the top one, that 254. Then it goes to the ISP. Uh, then it goes to the INET router. And then it goes to the switch and finally to the um, web server, 172.16.2.1. What happens is since I didn't run a report, if you do a report, it'll just send 10 packets and give you a report. I didn't do that, so it's going to just keep sending these packets. So the sent column is just a packet. You see how that's increasing. The loss percent is the uh, packet loss. And that's the percentage of packets that are being dropped for whatever reason. And that's just a percentage based on the number that were sent and the number that were received. So you can see that um, 200, 200, 222, there's some starting packet loss. And that doesn't necessarily mean there's a problem. A lot of times uh, when it's routers and firewalls, they'll have control plane uh, policing. So it actually is a, it's an ACL that drops some of the ICM packets purposely uh, as a part of policies to prevent uh, denial of service attacks. And that's a really common thing. So it's typically not something to concern yourself with uh, when you're going through these routers and you see that kind of thing. Routers typically do that. Um, it's a little little misleading, but uh, that's typically what it is. It could be something else to investigate as well, but you have to consider that uh, sometimes that's what it is as well. It's getting to the destination. Uh, and here there's some other columns. There's last uh, latency, average latency, best latency, and worst. And then there's a deviation, just means it gives you a number. So if there's uh, swings between, say, average and best and worst, you'll get a higher deviation. So you want a low deviation. So the average here is 27, then 30, 33, 50, and 39. So they're all pretty good. Packet loss for data applications, as long as it's less than 5%, um, that's typically not a problem. Even up to 10%, you might not notice a difference. But when you get to 18 to 20%, um, it's something worth investigating further to kind of get a better understanding of is there network congestion? Uh, is it temporary or is it ongoing? Just It's just a point to investigate a little bit more. The actual latencies are quite good. So that would suggest to you that the circuit is pretty healthy. When you look at all this, you wouldn't concern yourself. Although the pack of loss, if it stays high like that um, over a long period of time, you'd kind of want to know why why that is happening do a little bit more investigation. So you can see here, these are the numbers here. The packet loss starts on 200, 200, 2, 2. So there it is there. So that's the internet router. So that's this is ingress. This is actually giving you all the inbound uh, readings. So it'll take it at gig 00, zero inbound here, and it also gig 00, zero right here. And then the next inbound would be right over here. Wouldn't do anything on this gig 01. And then the next one, 172.16.1.2 on the switch. So some packet loss starts here. Could be some network congestion. And it goes down to the web server there. So all in all, it really doesn't look too bad. The ICMP is sometimes a problem. Um, if you get all question marks, uh, that means um, typically, if you, get, you can get question marks there. And it, but as long as that's not the last uh, device that's doing it, you're okay. If you get all question marks on the last device, 
typically the device is down. That's what it indicates. So you, you have a problem there. If you get it on one of these other hops, uh, often it's uh, there's some problem where it's just not permitting ICMP, not not allowing uh, the ICMP packs to return. So typically it's not a problem as long as you can finish the trace okay. So basically you really, when it comes to MTR, you really want to look at what's happening really on the last two or three hops. Um, that's really where you want to focus things um, to understand if you have a you know a healthy uh, network layer connection or not. So this is a really good tool for troubleshooting. There's just a, a lot that uh, you can do with it. The other thing is you want to make sure when you're doing testing to do it from both directions. So I want to start on client. I should also start it on the web server because this is just giving me the forwarding path measurements. The return path, I don't know what, what uh, return path it's taken, I have no idea. I'm getting a round trip time on it, but I don't know what the return path is because it's on the return path, it'll uh, start hitting different interfaces, right? And also potentially take a different path with a higher latency. And that's the other thing you want to know is where the latency is. All I'm getting is one reading here on the latency, but uh, you take this maybe 46, for instance, now it's 43, this fourth hop. So with that fourth hop on the return path, that could be 35 milliseconds of it could be in the return path and only 10 seconds or so in the forwarding path. So that's why it's important to do a uh, trace in both directions, both from client and from web server, and compare both. That's a really important practice when it comes to uh, network layer troubleshooting.